Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. I'm coming to you today here from a forest near my home in the Pacific Northwest. But today's video is going to take you to another favorite place of mine, and that is central Idaho. The mountains and trees and forests there are absolutely gorgeous, and you will see as we move through just how beautiful that area is. This is going to be a two-part series that is going to be looking at foraging and specifically forest foraging where we will be looking to identify certain trees within the mountains of central Idaho and to find what kinds of colors that region is going to bring to us. The first part, and that's today's video, is going to be specifically around pine cones and spruce cones. So you'll join me as I look to identify pine and spruce and see if I can find a nice source of cones that will allow me to make some pretty remarkable dyes. So why central Idaho? Well, I'll tell you, that's where my family is from and I have wonderful memories growing up and spending lots of time in the forests there. So I hope you will enjoy the journey that we take to an area that is really near and dear to my heart and in the process, learn a little bit about foraging and how to find color from different kinds of evergreens. So let's go grab that plane and see what we find in central Idaho. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy that you're joining me and getting out of the studio and kitchen for a little fun, natural color foraging. Hey there, so we've arrived at the Boulder Mountains and I can't tell you how incredibly gorgeous it is. I've never been here during the autumn and the colors are incredible. In a normally green and brown area, which is stunning on its own, to add in the mixture of um, golds and oranges and spots of red, it's fan-freaking-tastic. I'm here for one, per well, a couple purposes, but the reason why I'm bringing you with me is that I'm in search of color, and that's the color of central Idaho. And it's gonna be, um, consist of predominantly trees, where I'm going to be looking for four different trees while I'm here, and that is the spruce, the birch, the fir, and the pine. So. Let's see what we can find today out and about. And in the meantime, check out that. Those are aspen. They are in full foliage of fall and it is spectacular.
made it to Galena Pass. I used to love coming up here when I was a kid. It meant that we were about to drop into the Sawtooth Basin, which I adore. And you can see that awesome tree behind me, which I just always take pictures of whenever I'm here because it's a really just incredible view back into the valley. And I don't know, it's been here my whole life, actually. It's pretty amazing. Hi, I'm at uh, Pettit Lake. Um, I actually don't know that I've ever been here, but it's also at the base of the Sawtooth and it is so beautiful. Redfish was packed today and I didn't actually like that, so I decided to drive in a little further to a little more quiet space. And um, I'm pretty excited because I found a bit of a treasure and it looks like my first foraging is going to start right here. Along this lakefront is actually some beautiful pine trees and they are absolutely filled with cones. Pine needles are long and they're soft but the real marker here is that they always grow from the base in clusters out of a woody stem. So as you can see this one has two pine needles coming from one space on the branch itself and I happen to know that whether it has two, three, or five, you can then tell what kind of pine it is. And if I'm not mistaken, two is a red pine. So I decided to start looking on the ground to see what I could find. And my first round it looks like I have some cones. Now, one thing about ethical foraging is finding things that are already on the ground um, that have fallen from the tree. You don't want to steal from the tree. But also, sort of a general rule of thumb is if you can hold it in one hand, that's probably just enough for you to take. There are quite a few cones that are old, like this. And I don't actually think this would do much in the way of um, dye. But this one right here is beautiful, right? It's got that beautiful golden color. And um, yeah, this one's definitely gonna be coming back with me. Okay, so I think I've probably collected enough here. Um, I'm gonna move on to Alturas Lake. It's a few miles down the road. Um, again, if I've been there, I don't remember. I probably was as a baby. Um, but I thought I would go over there too and see what I could find. So I stopped to look at this pine tree because these pine needles are so long. I'm guessing they're six inches long. So it's definitely a different pine than what I had seen before, but the branches are too dull. You can't actually reach up to see them close up. So here I am at Alturas Lake. Um, it's got a sandy beach, which I wasn't expecting. And I saw um, my competition for cones, and that would be chipmunks. They are really here. Oh, do you hear him? <laughs> He's chirping. Um, which is one of the reasons why you have to be really careful about what you do when you're out foraging. You have to think about the environment and the wildlife that rely on it, and certainly cones are a major part of a chipmunk's diet, and they're getting ready for winter time, so they're going to be um, collecting, storing, and uh, I realize that I want to be very conscientious of that. So the one handful rule is, like I said, the best way to go about that. Never picking them from the tree themselves. And, you know, if you can take just one or two that you find at the base of um, different trees, that's also a great um, 
thing to do so that you can share um, or just take a small sampling from our chipmunk friends. There are definitely different evergreen trees here, but I think I will just enjoy the placid smoothness of this lake and make my way back over to Galena Summit to the Boulder Mountain area. I'm gonna head off. I wanna collect some spruce cones. They are longer and sort of long and skinny. Um, so I have a pretty good idea now what to look for there. I want to collect some of those as well today if I can. Fur, that one may be harder to identify. Let's go see. So this is definitely spruce. Unlike the pine, if you look at the places where the, um, the needles are coming off, they're coming off just as single uh, needles on their own. And they have these little woody um, barts near the branches. So you can see that is one of the markers. Spruce and fir have some similarities to them. And the thing I was reading was saying, if at the end of all of this, you can only identify pine versus spruce fir, you're doing well. So I'm gonna go with that this right here that I'm looking at is in fact a spruce, and I'll show you why. I see a cone up there hanging. Hopefully I can zoom in on the cone. And the cones on spruce hang, they grow downward. And on fir, they grow upward. Kind of like a candlestick is what it said. So I'm feeling pretty confident this is a spruce. So, now the question is, can I find cones on the ground? We'll see. There is yes. So, this is a spruce cone. Now, it looks different than what I've seen in some pictures. Spruce cones I've seen are a little bit more, a little longer but I don't see any other trees here, so I can't imagine this is a pine cone. So I was able to find quite a few spruce cones, actually, which are great, because I'm gonna bring these back with me. Um, they definitely make a dye, um, so I'm interested to see. I collected a different variety um, earlier in the day, but I know that these are definitely spruce cones. So I'll pop you up above so you can see. Hi! <laughs> but here's the spruce branches. So, and I know because of the needles. Everything now that I've been looking at in terms of the needles is definitely not fur. So I'm probably gonna leave here without any fur, but that's okay. That's the fun in foraging.
Although I didn't find fur on this particular trip in central Idaho, as you may have seen from my last video where I chopped up my noble fir Christmas tree and made some pretty beautiful dyes that way, we did find both pine and spruce cones along the way. So next time on this two-part series of central Idaho and some forest foraging, I will be looking for a different part of the tree and that is bark and branches. We'll specifically be looking for another evergreen, which we already found, which is pine, as well as the birch tree, which in central Idaho is a little more complicated to find, and I'll show you why in next video. So thank you again for being here on ColorQuest and joining me. I really am excited for us to get out of the studio to go into nature and really see what kinds of amazing colors we can find. If you're enjoying the content that you see, remember to hit subscribe and you will be treated to new content every Friday, running the gamut of how we can find and extract natural colors within our environment around us to enjoy absolute beauty within our artistic and creative practices. Thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you next time in central Idaho on Color Quest. For 24 miles of dirt, all the way to Sun Valley. There's a whole lot of that going on around you. As long as I make it. <laughs>